vintage swimsuits seem to be all the rage these days and I have been wanting to make one for some time now. In fact, I have had this particular pattern that you are about to see in my stash for literally a few years now. It's time. I finally recently finished sewing my 1950s inspired vintage swimsuit and in this video I will bring you along for the journey of how I made this. If you are on a historical swimsuit kick, I also have another video from last summer of how I created an 18th century inspired corset swim dress out of modern swim fabrics. It's very different from this summer's swimsuit, both in construction and the finished product and fit. And I think it would be really interesting to compare these two. In this video, I will be sharing the entire process of how I made this swimsuit, including, but not limited to, how I altered the pattern to fit me better, how I made a mock-up, cut out my fabric, and did my best to pattern match the stripes, how I added some extra details like piping, and how I finally added a few special features to the bodice of the swimsuit to help it be more supportive and flattering for my body type. Now stay tuned till the end of the video for the final reveal of this swimsuit to hear my final thoughts on how I like it, as well as one or two of the major things I would do differently next time. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I used this lovely 1950s swimsuit pattern from Mrs. Depew, and it will be linked in the description. Printed it off and taped together the pattern pieces. I then made a mock-up, and based on how this mock-up fit, I did, I did need to make some serious adjustments to the bodice especially. You can read more about those in the blog post. I opted to use this nice cotton poly blend of shirting material for the outer layer. Of course, the stripes did present a challenge in pattern matching, and I realized I was not going to be able to line the stripes up perfectly in all the areas, so I decided to offset this with some contrasting black piping in the seams, and I also chose to add some black straps and a black waistband, as well as black back ties for the swimsuit. Now I'm just cutting out all of my panels and marking notches. Here are all of my pieces cut out. I also opted to use cotton muslin for the inner lining of the swimsuit and some black silk. I'm using bias tape cut from this black silk to make my piping. Okay, so it's time to switch out my sewing machine foot for a zipper foot and to get making lots and lots of piping to put into all of these seams. I used linen cord that I had in my stash to make the piping, as well as the black silk that is actually left over from my black Victorian corset making project. Okay, so I used this cotton muslin for the inner lining. So the inner lining is comprised of a bodice, a lining for the bodice, and a little sort of bodysuit portion that fits underneath the skirt. So here I am sewing all of the princess seams for the bodice lining. And one of the improvements that I opted to add to the swimsuit was to add some boning channels over top of the seams. And I did this by adding woven cotton tape over the seams and stitching these on to create boning channels. I later used some synthetic whalebone for these boning channels, and I used the boning in all of the seams except for the seam directly over the bust. And now it's time to work on the lower lining, which is the bodysuit portion. So I'm pinning together those side seams. Based on the instructions, I found I actually needed to add a little pleat at the side back. I guess this just helps give a little more room in the bum area. 
and I stitch these all leaving openings for the gussets that we would later add. This is a triangular gusset for the back area and it's designed to sit right under the back zipper of the skirt. Based on the instructions, I had to first sew a hem along the top of it and thread this with elastic. Make sure you watch to the end of the video to see my final thoughts on this back gusset and whether or not it actually worked out for me. So just stitching that gusset in place now. And here is the diamond shaped crotch gusset all pinned in place. At this point I had some serious fit issues. This was simply not fitting comfortably over my hips despite having adjusted the pattern already. So I'm cutting open the side seam area and adding an extra good day of fabric. This is never a nice thing to have to do, but it's always better late than never. So now it's time to thread our elastic into the leg hole openings of the bodysuit. Just using a safety pin to guide that elastic through the channel. And that's what it looks like when it's complete. So when it comes to the outer swimsuit, I am pinning together the bodice panels and I'm drawing on my stitching line just to make sure that those stripes are matched up as accurately as they possibly can be. And pinning in my black piping into these seams. Again, the black piping just helps to distract the eye from the fact that these stripes were not able to match up perfectly in all of the areas due to the very curved princess seams. And now I'm just doing the same thing on the skirt panels, pinning them together with the piping inserted in the seams. Okay, so now we have an outer bodice and an inner lining bodice, and it's time to attach the two. So I'm pinning them right sides together, along with the straps that I, that I created out of black silk, which I interfaced. And I'm going to be sewing all around the top border of the bodice, as well as all around the outside of the black silk ties, which fasten the swimsuit at the back. Okay, so it's time to trim down our seam allowance and turn this right side out. Just pressing this at the, with the iron before taking it to the sewing machine and under stitching that seam allowance to the lining to create a cleaner, more smooth edge. And I'm using my tube turning tool to turn these back ties right side out. You can see that I also interface them with an extra layer of cotton muslin on the inside. Now, of course, I'm pressing these back ties and I did later top stitch around the edges. And now I'm adding my invisible zipper at the back of the skirt. Success. And you can see how that back gusset on the lining is designed to sit under the zipper area. So now I am finally basting the skirt to the bodysuit all around the waist. And now it's time to add our waist belt, which is exciting. I created this out of black silk, which I interfaced. And I pressed the edges under as accurately as I could to make sure that the bottom edge would be caught in a single seam of machine stitching when I went to attach this to the skirt and bodysuit. Okay. 
Okay, so the first finishing touch for this swimsuit was finishing the bottom edge of the skirt. Rather than a hem, I chose to do this with some black bias tape just to tie it all together. And this is my first time using this beautiful vintage Singer buttonholer to create the buttonhole that will be on the waistband of the skirt. And I also added some hook and eye tape to the center front of my swimsuit bodice to make this bathing suit breastfeeding accessible. And now one of my main finishing touches was adding some elastic to the edge of the swimsuit that sits under the armpit, which I found was gaping a little bit common feature that you'll find even on modern bras. I also opted to add some elastic to the underbust area to create a shelf bra effect and help hold everything in place without the use of underwire. And again, this elastic is only sewn to the inner lining. I decided it was sitting a little bit too high, so I opted to add another strip of elastic directly below it, which created a nice sort of shirring effect, which again was only on the inner lining, and it makes this swimsuit much more supportive. You can see it's completely invisible from the outside. So now I'm just finishing off the bottom of the swimsuit bodice with a hand stitched hem, which is invisible from the outside. And finally, I'm sewing on an under placket, which will sit under the hook and eye closure, preventing any skin from showing through, as well as protecting my skin from the hook and eyes. I also added some hand stitching around this elastic to create a channel at the armpit edge. Here's the finished swimsuit bodice and the finished skirt. Overall, I love how this swimsuit turned out. It definitely has the vintage look, both in its stripy pattern as well as the overall shape of the swimsuit. The swimsuit is a good mix between feeling chic, elegant, and relatively covered at the beach compared to most modern swimsuits these days, but still feeling comfortable, airy, and summery. So now let's move on to my criticisms or things I would change next time were I to make this swimsuit again. I want to reiterate some of the fit problems I had in the lower half of the swimsuit, particularly the bodysuit portion under the skirt. Now part of this is due to my own body type. I have a relatively high hips to waist ratio, meaning that in order for the bodysuit to fit snugly over my waist, I simply cannot get it over my hips to get it on and off. I did have to remove the back gusset on the bodysuit. Now in theory, this back gusset was a good idea because it allows the zipper of the skirt to operate independently from the bodysuit 
while the bodysuit is still completely covering your body in case the skirt were to fly up in the wind or in the water while you're swimming. However, the gusset still just didn't give me enough room to get this on and off. It was literally completely impossible for me to pull this on, which is why I did the drastic move of literally just taking my fabric scissors and cutting that gusset out. I think I'm going to end up basting the triangular opening of the bodysuit to the zipper opening of the skirt so that they'll just be attached in that area so that way the skirt will never fly up and reveal skin in that area of my body. It'll just be attached in that area. If I could do this again, I would also consider constructing the bodysuit out of a more modern stretch fabric, if only just at the side panels for extra comfort and ease in getting it on and off. The woven fabric is definitely nice to have in the front because it just helps smooth the silhouette and flatten your tummy a little bit, but some stretch panels at the sides would have helped enormously just with the fit and the comfort. Another complaint I have about the comfort are the leg openings on the bodysuit. They just tend to not be the most comfortable. They aren't terrible either though, it's totally wearable still. Perhaps all of this would have been fine if I'd simply just sized up the bodysuit part. Who knows? Now another point that is awkward to mention, but I feel compelled to for any of you out there who are planning on making this yourself, is bathroom accessibility. I didn't realize this until after finishing, completely finishing the swimsuit, but in order to use the bathroom in the swimsuit, one has to completely unzip, unbutton, and pull down the entire skirt and bodysuit. It would have been nice to have some kind of like button flap opening or something in the inner bodysuit, or for the inner bodysuit to just be entirely separate from the skirt or to simply just make the skirt alone and then wear it over a pair of modern high-waisted yoga shorts, which is what I did in my 18th century swim dress. Just something to think about for next time. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, click like, share it with your friends, and leave your comments and questions below. Be sure to check out the blog post, which is linked in the description, which will detail in writing the entire making process of this, and will give more details than what you got in the video, as well as photos. So it will be very helpful for you if you're planning on making a vintage swimsuit yourself. I also have an email newsletter on my blog that you can sign up for to get my weekly newsletter with updates of what I'm working on. And again, if you're on a historical swimsuit making kick right now, I have another video from last summer of how I created an 18th century inspired corset swim dress. And it's a very different style from this one, but also just in that alternative swimsuit category. I also have lots of other historical sewing, corset making, and even shoemaking videos on this channel. Definitely consider subscribing if you're interested in this kind of thing and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. One more thing that I have to mention is that I have a vintage bra pattern that I will shortly be releasing on my blog for free and that will be the subject of my very next video so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that and that you don't miss the free 1950s bra pattern that I will be releasing for all of you along with instructions on how to work with it and how to adjust it to your body shape. And I also have a couple recent videos about the making of my vintage bra as well as why I think vintage bras are far superior to modern ones. One, so definitely check that out if you're interested in this kind of thing. All right guys, I'll see you on the next video.